It's four o'clock on Wednesday. You know what that means. More fun, more excitement on another wonderful episode of Taxi's Quarantini Happy Hour. Woo-hoo! And thank you, fake audience. Thank you, fake band. Good fade. Hello, everybody. Let me get to that chat room and say hello to all the folks in there. There you are. Hello, Bob Gunnerfelt, Dan Weber, Darren Moss, Martin Gravel, Nancy Collell, howdy. <laughs> the usual cast of characters. New haircut. Uh, actually, I got this haircut on Saturday. Good thing, because now I can't get one again for an indeterminate amount of time. Hello, Lori Wynn. How are you? <laughs> Hody to you, too. <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man. Hello, Ian. Hello, spiritual. Hip, hip, hooray. <laughs> you guys are funny. Hello, Dave Merkel, Peter Rahill, um, Andre Stepanian, Paul House. Paul, I got your email. Um, I actually want to connect with you and do a, a Zoom with you in a day or two to talk about some of that stuff. Um, Patrick Adams, Darren Fletcher. You know, it's funny, I just checked my lighting and stuff like three minutes ago, and I don't remember looking this tan. Um, I did, uh, I just drove to the office. Uh, Deborah, myself, and Ariana were interviewing somebody for a front desk position at the office. The interview went well. Uh, and on the way back, I actually opened up the sunroof on my car, and my hair was blowing all over. So maybe that's it. I've got the, uh, the must up hair look. Uh, hello, Jim Stamper, Giovanni Lanza, Lou Lewis. Uh, who else did I miss there? Richard Carr Piano. Hello. Ah, so really big news, like huge news. Um, hello, Debbie Ward. Happy Ron. How are you guys? Um, and the big news is the coyote is back. <laughs> I don't know if it's the same coyote, but I have a feeling it is because they tend to go to the same places shopping for garbage or whatever else they can find. But here's the funny part. Uh, I think it was last weekend, uh, my wife had a potted plant in a planter that was about eh, that big. Um, and the, the plant that was in there had died and a bunch of grass started growing in there. And... Uh, you know, who needs a, a potted plant with a bunch of grass? And I'm not talking about the kind you smoke. I'm talking about the kind you mow with your lawnmower. Um, anyway, so we wanted to use that pot for something new. Uh, so I turned it upside down, dumped it out. And because the roots had gotten so immense in the pot, uh, and it was a kind of a I don't know what kind of shape you'd call it, but it was a square pot that tapered down towards the bottom. Um, when I dumped it out, the whole thing, roots and dirt, came out as one big clump. And we have a hill behind our house. So I just took that thing and kind of kicked it down the hill, figured, what the hell? It'll just stay there. Nobody will ever see it. Eventually, rain will dissipate it. Excuse me. And uh, no biggie. Excuse me. So this morning I woke up and I checked on my phone because I saw an alert that something was at our front door at like 5.37 a.m., which is coyote time. Uh, and sure enough, I could see this ghost-like uh, image of a coyote um, coming out from the, the plants near the front of our house uh, and walking by the front door and taking off. Hey, Cass. Um, so I went, ah, the coyote's back, no biggie. Anyway, I went out in the backyard and that clump of dirt with the roots in it, which weighed, I don't know, five pounds-ish, maybe, uh, maybe a couple more, had been dragged up from the hillside to the backyard and the coyote had taken its paws, presumably, maybe its mouth, if it liked a mouthful of dirt and roots, um, and it had torn this pretty condensed clump of dirt and roots apart clearly looking for something to eat inside of there. And also it dropped it right near where the uh, gopher that I've been having a hard time trapping has been hanging out and popping his little head up, making little gopher holes. 
and the coyote took its claws, paws, whatever, paws, and had done this in the yard trying to get to, um, get to, hello, uh, Brad Gray um, and Heidi Owen. Uh, the coyote had dug up our yard trying to get to the gopher tunnel. So uh, I'm so happy now because we've been locked down again, locked out of the office. Uh, and, and you know, the, what can I say? The coyote and the gophers, they entertain me. So, uh, uh, and I picked my first tomato off the plant. It's ripening a little more on the kitchen windowsill and I have a feeling that tomorrow we will be eating our first organically grown tomato from Lasco Family Farms. Big excitement here at our house. Um, hey Keith, how are you? Uh, so there you go. Um, you're right. Uh, JP and Mojo Bone have been a little absent lately. Gonna have to call 911 in Nashville and uh, let's see, uh, Indiana, Lafayette, Indiana, I believe, is where uh, Mojo lives. Ah, <sighs> yep. Plus 100 organic growing, absolutely. Um, and uh, I think I mentioned yesterday, I have my first, uh, what do they call those guys, zucchinis. I've got a little baby zucchini with that little yellow flower. Hello, Joseph Alonzo, how are you? TJ Mackey. Um, all right, so I want to continue yesterday's conversation. Oh, and by the way, um, Hey, hey, uh, John Michael Carnatz, uh, hello from Illinois. Where are you from in Illinois? Because I'm from Illinois. Hello, Yuka. Um, anyway, uh, I want to continue yesterday's conversation um, about uh, road rally panel or uh, interview topic ideas. And I see that we've got one already from Darren Moss, which is music supervisor who screened their own listings at Taxi. They know the industry. They've heard the members. Here is their advice. Okay, I like that. Um, Self-screening music soups. Their take. That might be problematic in that well, I guess not. It would out them as music soups who screen their own stuff. So, I mean, we've only got a few that we allow to do that. So you guys might actually be able to, you know, if you see a screener number, you would know that it's one of three screeners or however many we have. Um, Road Rally group think session. Absolutely. Uh, we're giving away a car today. No, but you know what? why don't we give away a copy of composer catalog today um because we get people talking about uh all the time in the chat room and on the website and on the forum people saying what do you guys use to organize your music uh, and keep track of what you've submitted what's been signed um you know different mixes that you have of each thing so uh, I like, uh, Keith, are you up for that? Keith says, let's do it. All right. So the person who leaves the most comments, most good comments in the um, comment area after today's show, we will have Keith connect with you and you will get an awesome copy of Composer Catalog, which does all that stuff. And many, many taxi members use it. They love it. Um, Ken Bearden says, how about coyotes that have screened their favorite gophers? There you go. Um, wow, you have a problem with your website. Gee, that never happens to us, ever. <laughs> Blur the faces. <laughs> I like it. Uh, I might need a second piece of paper here, Darren Moss Rally Suggestion. Boy, Darren, you're full of them. Not full of it, full of them. Top five things that are wrong with home recordings and how to fix them. Top five home recording mistakes and how to fix them. Okay. Hello, Ronald Schultz. 
<laughs> Martin Gravel. Maybe the Gophers could be a great new name for, let's say, a football team. Yeah, uh, that'd be like uh, the Oklahoma Gophers. Uh, Tax Anonymous. <laughs> On the Bee Gees uh, thing that we were talking about yesterday, keep it simple, play it well, so true, absolutely. Um, John Michael, did you say, uh, did I miss it? Did you say where you're from in Illinois? I'm just curious, being an Illinois boy myself. Um, can we bring screeners on? You mean, um, yeah, we've done panels of screeners, but sure. Um, you know, honestly, that's one of the most valuable things uh that we've done is having screeners up on the dais at the road rally uh, i mean who better they know all the mistakes that are made um screeners yeah screener panel that's a good one Uh, essential equipment to produce broadcast quality. Honestly, Paul, I, I'm a little worried about that one because, I mean, we can talk about, you know, home studio basics. Maybe I'll get one of the sponsors to do a panel on a good, cheap, and effective sponsor panel. Home studio starter set up for high quality. I, broadcast quality can be so much more and other stuff other than just the, the quality of the audio. So I don't know if we want to talk about it in that sense, but just talking about, you know, a lot of people want to know, what can I put together for 500 to $1,000, which frankly, uh, you know, for five or six hundred bucks you can put together a great home studio you'd be absolutely surprised well maybe you wouldn't because you guys are regulars but a lot of our people matt vanderbilt is a great example you know like a, a mid-level imac um a couple of 200 hundred dollar microphones a three or four hundred dollar pair of speakers 129 dollar um interface um uh, an inexpensive midi keyboard depending on you know do you want um uh what do you call it um weighted keys or non-weighted keys how many keys you actually want you want 66 88 whatever music supervisor speed date music suit plays one minute of each random member's music gives one minute of feedback on each music suit feedback So I'll call it Music Soup Speed Date. Um, screener Races. 112 finally crosses the bridge to finish. <laughs> um, how to find your weak spots in being critical about your own music. How to be objective. I'm going to say that. How to be objective in identifying your own weaknesses. Man, oh man, if I can read my writing later, it will be a miracle. Um, Backing up your stuff in file management. Keith LeBrant might be an excellent choice of person to do that one. Um, current song structures, here's what's happening in 2020. You know, it's funny, talking about songwriting for a minute, um, here's an example. Uh, now I won't use names. 
uh, many of the huge hit songwriters that I know personally that have had mega hits that we all know, um, I find when I put them on stage at the Road Rally, they're often really good teachers and they're very engaging and people love the panels. But a lot of times um, the hits they had were like seven years ago, 12 years ago. And the rules of the game back then, as far as song structure goes, um, are already different now. And, uh, oh, uh, what's his name? Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I've got a really good friend, but I can't remember his name. Um, Hookman. Hookman panel. Um, R.E. Current. Songwriting. So I've got a friend, um, I've actually played golf with him, uh, named Hookman. Um, if you Google him, uh, Marlon Hookman, I can't remember his last name because I always call him Hook. Um, anyway, Michael's superpower, forget names, that is my superpower. I, I wish I could improve on that. I don't think that there's a uh, Prevagen or any of those drugs would help me because I've been this way since I've been 20-something. Um, someone from isotope uh do you know isotope is a sponsor that has expressed interest in participating in this year's road rally as a um, as a sponsor and if they do they would probably do one of those half hour sponsor presentations procedure for a first time submission for the website. Ariana, can you make a note about that? Don't we have a here's how to submit thing? Um, or maybe that was for the old website design. I don't know if we've got a new here's how you submit. Um, make a note about that, please, so that you and I can discuss that. Um, ooh, current versus dated sounds. Good one, KBL. I like that a lot. Data genre examples. <laughs> Cass, thank you Cass. How to watch Taxi TV and properly hit the like button. Yes, please go hit that like button. Um, Andre says there is a submission how-to. Good to know, you'd think I would know this stuff, but we have thousands of pages on our website and I honestly haven't memorized them. Oh, Ariana says we do have instructions, there you go. Um, how to collaborate specifically, which DAW is best for sending tracks back and forth. I don't know that that's a whole panel. We've done collaboration um, panels. I think I did one called Collaboration Nation. And honestly, people just send, um, just send files. Um, and, and you can import the files, whether you're using one DAW or another. I think that they're all pretty um, good about using um, exported files and importing them. And then you do your thing and then send it back to the person you're collaborating with. Um, Robin talked about playlist. Which best exposure for your songs? Uh, I don't understand that one, Joseph. Uh, uh, Edmund says, I missed a deadline. There's no way to submit again, right? Um, you can contact member services at taxi.com. It depends. I mean, you know, if you missed it by an hour, um, and it's not a super tight turnaround. Sometimes it depends where we are in the screening process. Um, how can I say this? Um, we discourage late submissions very strongly because it holds up the entire system. We cannot send out the notifications to the people who submitted until every last thing has been um, screened. And then, we, as I've explained before, we have like 16 steps in the process. 
So after the stuff gets screened, the head screener checks to make sure that the screeners did their work well. Um, and then the stuff goes uh, back to another person and then that person approves it and they submit the stuff, they put it into disco playlists and prep it to send out to the industry person. So there's a lot of things. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead. Edmund, was it something, you know, the deadline last night and you're trying to submit today? That's a possibility, but uh, I know the guys in the A&R room get really cranky about that because it really messes up their um, timeline. Ariana makes a great suggestion. If anybody's having trouble submitting or uploading songs to their profile, feel free to email member services at taxi.com. Uh, Darren Moss, uh, rally suggestion, go through songs that get used in film and TV over and over. Why these songs work for film and TV so damn well. I already know the answer to that one. They're simple. It's amazing. Um, everybody who, I, I think Vanderbilt talked about it the other day when we had him on. I think literally every single one of our successful members that I've ever asked the question, do you have certain tracks that just seem to get used over and over and over again? And they all comment, yeah, surprisingly, it's one that I didn't think that was that good. It was like super simple. It was from years ago. And oftentimes they'll lay there like a lox, you know, they'll sign a deal with a library and it just won't do anything for three or four years. Then all of a sudden it gets used once and then gets used again. And before you know it, it's the one that gets used over and over again. Uh, and, and it doesn't mean that it gets used over and over in the same shows all the time. Um, if it's only signed, if it's signed exclusively with one library, that one library, it's not like um, they're pitching stuff going, hey, I got a great track. It's they're pitching it over and over again because it fits the request um, from the brief that they get. So maybe after it gets used once or twice, they tend to include it more frequently in other batches that they send out in response to briefs. And because it's been used, it will, uh, the end user doesn't know. Let's say Darren Moss has a, a track, uh, a simple little acoustic uh, instrumental cue, like a country instrumental cue. And it gets used, it's signed with ABC Library and it gets used. And so the next time ABC Library has a request for country instrumentals, they include that one and lo and behold, it gets used again. Well, whatever was appealing to the first end user <clears throat> is probably appealing to the second end user. But the first end user, let's say it's an editor on a reality show, um, doesn't you know, publish a list somewhere out in the public view that these are the tracks that I used. As a matter of fact, they would probably not wanna do that because they don't want other people to have the same music in their shows. It's just that it has appeal and uh for that type of request so yeah uh peter rahill says that was a good cue title lay there like a lox uh would that be dramedy certainly not tension um i'm trying to think what would lay there like a lox be <laughs> probably new age <laughs> Yeah, sometimes uh, addressing Darren's thing about the simple ones getting used, um, and, and Keith uh, LeBrant can probably attest to this, that sometimes you send a track that's a full-on production that maybe has 12 to 24 different tracks in there. And it, you know, it may not be busy or complex in its arrangement or composition, but it's a full production with a lot of stuff stacked up in there. And it's not unusual that the stripped down version, um, an alt mix that might just be bass, drums, rhythm, guitar, that that's the thing that gets used most often. Uh, do we ever get any briefs uh, from Now Again Records? Not that I'm aware of. 
I think Keith is trying to fix his website. <laughs> Ken Bearden, question, um, what can the guest offer that Michael doesn't know? Probably a lot. Um, believe me, I don't know at all. Keith says, yep, verifying what I just guessed he would say. Uh, yep, my Epic Queen tracks get cut down to um, bass and drums. <laughs> <laughs> um, Mark Real says using MIDI controller MIDI keyboards as controllers I'm loving these suggestions Yeah, Cass pointed out further up the, the chat. One editor likes a certain section, another editor might like a different section. That's true. One one editor may use the A section um, at the end because it's bigger and has the stinger already on it. Another editor might like the, the B section because it's got a little different mood maybe or something. Um, Ian Shortle says, finding your genre and style and researching it effectively. Excuse me. Um, I actually, after we got off air with Robin the other day, I actually, she said, so what would you like me to do at this year's rally? Because of course we have to have a Robin panel or presentation. And I said, why don't you do one on genres? And she goes, hmm, that's interesting. Let me jot that down. So she may do that. Um, let me write it down in full form. Uh, finding your genre and researching it. Writing a title, lyrics first, or writing melody chords first, the pros and cons. I don't think that's an hour or a 90 minute thing. I think that that's a question and answer with somebody like a Robin or a hit songwriter. Um, Ian's question is a good one. What was Ian's question? Uh, oh, I wrote that down. Okay, good. Do you know uh, Martin Gravel, uh, management organization of tracks and stems for fast, easy corrections? I've got to believe that Composer Catalog may be the best way to do that. Um, I think it was about four or five years ago, one of the music library owners that we work with um, pretty frequently, um, a lot of members have material signed by that company, uh, and this gentleman asked if he could do a panel and don't blurt out his name if you know who I'm talking about, but uh, he's a very nice guy and a good library owner, gets a lot of placements for our members, but he said, um, would you mind if I do a panel called What's the Genre? And it would just be him on stage with a microphone. We would play a track from somebody in the audience and then the library owner would identify the genre. I am sad to report that he was getting them so incredibly wrong that it was embarrassing. And I actually kind of had to, you know, like blurt things out before he answered incorrectly and go, so what do you think? That one's pop rock, right? And he'd go, uh, yeah. So <laughs> just goes to show that just because somebody owns a library that they may not know the genres. It's hard because it's such a gray area, you know, what is pop rock today? I mean, pop rock used to be, um, uh, you know, like somebody like Richard Marx or uh, who, who's Rick Springfield would be a great example of older pop rock. Um, and, and nowadays it's not that at all. 
Um, what about Martin Tishi from Vienna Sounds? He was brilliant for orchestral. I love that guy. You know, I haven't spoken to Martin, I don't believe, since we've been locked down, and he, he's become a good friend of mine. Um, Martin Tishi. Maybe I'll see if uh, he can do a sponsor presentation. We've actually had uh, like master classes for Pro Tools and Logic. Um, I don't know that we've ever had one done for Cubase. Um, I'm a little hesitant to do these technical things in the live context. It's one thing to shoot video, you know, where you've got a camera on the screen or you're doing a screen capture, um, you know, a live screen capture of not just still shots, but, you know, video cap from the screen. Um, and doing that and inserting a face so that you can see the person talking, that's not very hard to do when you're doing it offline and you have the ability to edit. To get it right, um, Paul House can chime in on this, I'm sure, that getting it to the point where you can do that kind of thing in a live scenario and, and rely on it coming out wonderfully not as easy as you might think. Doing it live on stage at the road rally uh, might be easier. Um, let's see. Dan Weber, Keith LeBrant's composer catalog is great in getting... Okay, so we've got a plus one on that. We've got a plus one on... Can a songwriter alone without co-writers still make it today? Again, that, that's a question and an answer, maybe an answer from a couple of people. That's not an entire hour, 90 minutes, I'm afraid. I didn't know that Cubase users know everything. Live demos are always fun. Um... John Michael Carnatz wants to know, when did you mix for Cheap Trick? Um, I did one song with them called I Must Be Dreamin'. It was for an animated big budget feature film that I cannot remember the name of. I don't know if, my, I never saw the movie, so I don't know if my version ever made it into the movie quite frequently for stuff like that when a band is, has been assigned the task of writing a song for a scene. Um, they will record a version and send it in to the movie's producer or director um, and probably get a list of notes back on things they'd like changed, oftentimes lyric, sometimes tempo, sometimes even the key. Um, and I know that the version I did with them was the first time they recorded it. They were actually on tour in Florida. They came to my studio in Fort Lauderdale. I want to say we worked two or three days on that song. I must be dreaming. Da, 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 da. I have no idea where that went. I know I had a really good time working with them. They were great guys. Um, I do remember uh, Robin Zander. See, there's a name I remembered. You guys, I, I don't think I've ever told, here's another studio story. story. So Robin Zander, the lead vocalist, amazing singer, by the way, um, he, was, he spent most of his time sitting in the lounge. We had about a, about a 15 or 20 by 20 room outside of the control room um, that you could get to from the studio itself, the, you know, the live room or the control room. Uh, it was this really kind of cozy room with a couple of couches in it, you know, a lounge. Um, there was a little fridge and a kitchen area and people would go hang out there and just do what musicians do, anything from watching. They watched a lot. We had a three screen TV, a tube TV with like two little, you know, seven inch square or rectangular TVs on the side and then a big like 24 inch in the middle. And I remember Robin Zander spent a lot of time sitting in that room watching MTV and all of a sudden we heard this shrieking sound. I mean, shrieking. 
and I, I thought he was being attacked or something, and I whipped open the control room door, and there he was standing on top of the coffee table in front of the couch screaming, a mouse, a mouse, and there was a mouse that was just running around the lounge. Um, why it was there, I don't know. We'd never had like a mouse or a rat problem in the studio before, but this mouse was running around. And uh, I wanna say that my assistant engineer and one of the roadies from the band caught the mouse, put it inside of an empty Marlboro pack, um, blew some pot smoke into the Marlboro pack, <laughs> and got this poor little mouse stoned out of its gourd. Then they took the Marlboro pack and taped it to uh, the metal flange of a 10-inch 10, 10 reel of quarter-inch tape and then put it on a tape machine, stuck a razor blade in the electric eye um, so it thought there was tape going through there, and then hit the fast-forward button so that the mouse went through centrifugal force training, much like an astronaut would do before they get launched in a rocket. And uh, let's just say the centrifugal force made the mouse rip through the cardboard of that Marlboro pack, and it went flying across the control room. If I remember correctly, it hit somebody like in the shoulder and then the mouse bounced off a wall. Um, in the control room and was knocked unconscious. Yes, mice in space. So uh, um, <laughs> I remember that was a very wobbly mouse <laughs> after that experience, having a tough time finding any of its four feet. Um, okay, back to re uh, how to self-release and promote music in 2020. Uh, how about if I get Tony Van Veen, how to self-release and promote. Your, man, I can't read my writing. Promote, -y. promote your own music with Van Veen. Um, how about if I get uh, Tony Van Veen, the um, CEO of Disc Makers, who's like a world-class expert on that, to do that as a sponsor panel. Um, yeah, that was definitely a guy thing, Nancy. I don't think there's a, a woman around that would want to launch a mouse into space. Pierre, I have four listing submissions pending. Some go to June 2nd. Is that normal? Um, I know that things have been a little slow. It depends. You know, if it's a listing like for drones, for instance, where we might get 500 submissions in um, and the person on the receiving end is in no particular hurry, we may prioritize that one, give that less priority than somebody who needs something overnight or in four days. Um, I would send an email to member services at taxi.com and ask Liz at uh, member services if she would be so kind as to check um, with the guys in the A&R department about that. What's a mouse when you're used to living among gophers, coyotes, falcons, and rabbits? So true. And don't forget, I did actually uh, get a rat in a trap recently. Um, Jim Stamper, watch a music editor do their job putting music into a show on a workstation. Um, we had a video editor uh, two years in a row do that presentation in the Grand Ballroom, Jim, um, and she was amazing. Um, but doing that live online is tough because we had to use actual footage from a real reality show. Um, getting permission to do that was extremely hard, even though we were doing it as a one-off in the grand ballroom. Um, being able to put that up online, there aren't too many shows that would give us permission to do that. Uh, is the owner of a disc company going to advise you to release singles, though? Yeah, uh, Van Veen is quite expert on all that stuff. Uh, 
understanding a library contract. We did that last year at the road rally. Weren't you there, Andre? Did you not come to last year's road rally? Um, yeah, we did that. As a matter of fact, the transcript of that panel will be coming out later this month, or no, next month, sorry, I'm one month ahead. Um, so in the August edition of the Taxi Newsletter, you're gonna get a music attorney, um, I think two library owners and possibly a member all giving their um, input and expertise on the different types of music library contracts, what you should look for, what you should avoid, what's normal, what's not. So there you go, got that one covered already. Um, Rich Ezra is very good, uh, trends in general. Rich E on trends in the industry. Um, Jason Bloom. on songwriting. Favorite plugins and why? When you say favorite plugins, are you talking about plugins for like outboard gear plugins? Are you talking about um, favorite sounds from library, sample libraries. Oh, Andre, okay, so you did. I thought for some reason, I thought you were at the last road rally. Well, you're gonna love the article when it comes out in the newsletter. So make sure you open the email. Um, again, not the one that's gonna come out at the end of July, but the one that will come out at the end of August. We'll absolutely have that information in there. different challenges between being a writer musician, writing recording your own music and a writer producer writing songs and getting them recorded by others. I guess think about that one. Uh, okay, Rifts That Rule says both um, plugins, sounds and outboard. I didn't know I was gonna to have to actually do work during today's episode. <laughs> um, how to quickly get ideas together and then develop them. <clears throat> I need more information than that. Uh, a little more specificity, please. Um, Jan, a good idea. What did Jan say? What sample libraries work for various genres? Well, we could include that, um, again, is that an hour and 90 minutes? Um, what about if that was just included in the favorite plugins and, and sounds? Because you, you know what the answer is gonna be is there isn't a particular library that works for this genre. You'll find that this library has a lot of stuff that works in this genre, but I would also use that library in the other library. Like, let's take EDM, you know, um, it might be one library for drum sounds. It could be another library for bass sounds, it could be another library for synth pads. So it's not just like, oh, buy that library for EDM. Um, and, and the same is, is true of DAWs as well. You know, there's some DAWs that have a workflow that works a little better for EDM, but it doesn't mean you can't. You know, it might be 5% better or 10% better, um, but there's no reason if you're working in Logic and you love it and you're fast and good with it to go out and buy another DAW and use that just for EDM. That's right, Andre says, I would have remembered if you were there because we'd talk about fishing. Honestly, Andre, when we do a road rally, I'm so busy. I spend almost every, well, I do spend, not almost, I spend every day, Thursday night, 
um, is all set up stuff. And basically I just wander around making sure the staff is taken care of that the guys who are manning like the one-to-one -one mentor sign up table have food and drinks to keep them going, uh, making sure registration is all happy and good. Um, going into the, the room where people line up uh, to register, they can be in there for hours and I'll take flats of vitamin water, not vitamin waters of rock stars. Speaking of which, Today's episode sponsored by Rockstar. Mm -mm, good. Um, so I do a lot of that, just making sure uh, making sure the ballroom is being put together um, really well. If the stage is in the right location. Sometimes they put it a foot or two farther back and there's no room to squeeze between the back of the stage and the back wall of the ballroom. So little details like that. That's what I do Thursday night. Starting Friday morning, um, the staff and I are downstairs around 7 a.m. They do their thing and basically I pace around getting nervous about the fact that I'm about to kick off a road rally and then at nine o'clock sharp, I start with the, hey, welcome to the road rally stuff and then go into whatever the first thing is. Um, you know, if it's an interview or whatever. Uh, and basically I don't leave that ballroom um, it's funny, everybody gets a lunch break, you know, let's say between 12.30 and 2 o'clock. Um, while everybody else is eating lunch, I am generally meeting with the people that are doing the setup for the after lunch panel, talking to the sound guys about any issues we had that morning, warning them about stuff that may be problematic that afternoon, um, running up to my room to brush my teeth, sanitize my hands 10 times, um, probably change my shirt because I can't have the same look in the afternoon that I had in the morning touching up my makeup. I actually don't do makeup for the road rally, only for you guys on Taxi TV. Um, so basically I'm in the ballroom moderating panels almost the entire road rally weekend. And usually I wrap up around 6.30ish uh, in the ballroom. I go upstairs to my room and put my feet up on the coffee table, turn on the news and just spend an hour just by myself. And then I go stalking around the, you know, after hours, like checking out the open mics, shaking a few hands. I do tend to avoid the bar area because I don't like loud drunk people in the spittle that seems uh, to come along with that. So as much as I'd love to go be social, um, I really get grossed out by, <laughs> how are you, spittle in the face, especially now. So uh, there you go. But would I end up, uh, I don't have a lot of time for chit chat is what I'm trying to say. But if you tag me at the road rally and say, let's talk fishing, you probably get my attention better than other people. Um, You know what? I will call John Pearson to make sure he's okay. Um, all right. Uh, wow, we've got 12 minutes left. Um, Paul House, I, don't, I honestly don't know how Taxi pulls this all together so well. I've seen only a fraction of the work you guys do. I salute all involved. Lunch break? What's that? Thank you, Paul. It's hard to explain it. Uh, yeah, we're talking about the road rally, Robbie. We haven't made the official announcement yet because I'm waiting. I did get an acknowledgement from the hotel that they too just don't think it's possible to do one at the hotel under the current uh, state regulations and city municipal regulations. So we haven't made an official announcement yet, but it looks like the road rally is gonna be an online affair this year, sadly. Um, it, it, you know, I will do the best to deliver amazing content to you guys. That's why we're talking about potential panels. Um, but, you know, it's harder to do stuff online than it is to do it uh, virtually. I mean, uh, in, in, you know, brick and mortar. Um, Paul House sent a really nice email last night saying, you know, here are some problems. He's an expert on this stuff and here are some problems that you are, are likely to see. It's tough doing uh, like, you know, everybody's like, do Zoom, do Zoom. Well, doing a Zoom with five panelists, all the tech that can go wrong at their houses, um, it can ruin a panel. If one person is just like lagging or glitching out, it can really ruin a panel. Um, so we have good news is we have over three months to get it together, but that's why I'm asking you guys for suggestions. Um,
are you guys in your office again? No, we were supposed to be this coming Monday. I went in this past Monday just to do some stuff. And while I was there doing my thing, that's when uh, our lovely governor, as I love to call him, uh, made the announcement that non-essential offices were being closed again. Personally, I think taxi is an essential office. I mean, come on, law firms are considered an essential office. What the hell do they do other than work on computers all day? It's not like they need to be in the office where their you know, um, paper, uh, their books, a law library, so all that stuff's online now. So why do they need to be in an office when we can't be? Lawyers are bad. Don't like lawyers. Um, Ooh, L. Harrison, thanks for reminding me. My rock star is Mandarin Orange Natural Flavor, which I mix with coconut water. Sometimes I add rum. That actually sounds good. Um, the legitimacy of remote critiquing versus screening the office, how's that been going? Actually, better than I expected. I mean, during the normal course of business, when we're in the office, a certain number of our screeners work remotely anyway. I mean, I just got reached out to by one of our screeners who worked with us for like 10 years and she was wonderful. Uh, and she's Australian and she's back in Australia now and wanted to know if we had any work for her. Um, she earned her stripes by working probably five years or more under the roof and we trusted her and know that she's responsible about getting stuff done. Great ears, great screener, gave great feedback. So she's the type of person I would let work remotely. Um, there are other screeners. There are few in LA that live far, far away from the office. You know, they've got like an hour and a half commute. We will let them work partially in the office, partially remote, but they have to earn that right because uh, what happens, I don't think the quality of the critiques, as I said, we actually check all the critiques. The quality of the screening and the critiquing doesn't go down. What is affected is the timeliness of them getting their work done. Um, it's amazing when people work from home, you know, oh, uh, the gardener needs to talk to me about I've got some blight on a tree outside or I've got a coyote or a gopher problem or got to take my kid to a doctor appointment today. A million little things like that happened to all of us during the course of, you know, being at home. Um, and that can affect, you know, if some, somebody is slated to screen something and we need to meet a deadline for the industry and for the members, of course, um, and that person bags out on us because something else came up. Um, that doesn't happen when they're under the roof. It does happen when they work remote. So we have to scramble and we can't just find any screener to plug into that scenario. We've got to find another screener that number one is available and number two is expert in that genre. So it, it, we run into problems like that. But as far as the quality of their ears and the quality of their critiques, we've seen zero difference on that. I'm trying to get caught up with you guys. The rally chat will be out of control. Um, I've actually, uh, yeah, and, and we're gonna endeavor to simulcast it both on YouTube Live and Facebook Live. Every member will get a key to get in and the member will also be allowed to give that to one guest. Um, so we will very likely have at least one person, um, probably Ariana working with me on the YouTube chat and maybe Bria working remotely from uh, Indiana or Kentucky, wherever she is, um, working on the uh, Facebook chat and then uh, feeding the best questions back to me and then I will ask the, the panelists. So I think that will work out well. Better upgrade computers for the road rally. Yeah, you know, that thought actually crossed my mind, Andre. My computer's been stable for the last week or two, but I have had those momentary glitches like that black screen that day. That scared the crap out of me. Um, oh, as far as hating uh, lawyers except for Aaron, yeah, I love Aaron. Um, uh, we are actually going to get real t-shirts made that you will be able to buy online for the road rally. We should make that requirement that everybody watching the road rally has to wear their taxi t-shirt and send us a photo. How to break into hit songwriting camps. Um, I don't know that that's a full panel, but I'll put it down. 
how to break into song camps. I believe the answer is with a crowbar. Um, thank you for that compliment. Ronald Schultz says, I've been to four rallies. I'm amazed at what you and your staff do. Fantastic. Your staff are always very helpful. They really are. And, and I'm telling you, right now, we've got the best staff we've had in probably 10 years. Just love them as people, um, love their personalities. I get very proud, sometimes actually a little choked up at the quality of uh, member services that they give out, um, the quality of listings getting better and better, just everything about the staff. We actually interviewed a young lady today, Ariana, my wife and myself interviewed a young lady um, today that uh, did a great job in the interview who may be our next front, our next member, whoops, my other phone is ringing. Call from unavailable. Good, unavailable is not going to get answered. Um, uh, don't cancel your hotel reservations just yet, Alex. I want to know for absolute the, that the hotel is going to say, yes, you cannot do a road rally this year at the hotel. Um, it's extremely likely, but I'm not making it official until I hear back from them. I did hear back from the hotel today say, yeah, you know, we're bummed out. We were optimistic, but now with the latest uh, edition of the governor's lockdown, it doesn't look like it can happen. Um, we actually have a 90 day, we, 90 days before the road rally, we actually have to send a formal letter saying um, we're going to exercise the cancellation clause due to acts of God and uh, it's called an impossibility clause. Acts of God and government regulation. Boy, we hit both of those. Um, but because I was like, I don't know, maybe a week or two in front of that 90 day window, the uh, person that I contacted said, let me just double check with the general manager. I'll get back to you. So I'm waiting until I have the absolute official word. Um, let's see. Uh, Got it. Four uh, XL. Um, no, we don't have any right now, but we'll probably do it on one of those places that prints them, you know, on demand. Um, hoodies, please. Oh, you know me. I love hoodies. I've gone my entire life without hoodies. I did buy one hoodie in like 19. 86 or 87 to go on a camping trip and I still have that hoodie, but it's a zip up hoodie. I don't like those as much as I like the pullover jobs. So about a year and a half ago, I got some University of Miami hoodies and I love them. And I actually love when the, when we get that brutally cold weather here, when it like drops down below 50, I break out the hoodies. So yeah, you guys know my wardrobe well, this is summer. Um, Autumn and spring are my flannels, of which I, I love flannel shirts, as you well know. And then winter time, I break out the hoodies. Um, the taxi garage rally. Yeah, you know, um, ironic that I paid like 1500 bucks to get the brakes fixed on the, on the checker last year. And this year it's not even gonna come out of the garage in all likelihood. Uh, road rally can't be set up in two weeks. No, it cannot. Uh, I will miss staying at the hotel, the whole scene, of course, but we'll have some great experiences. Yeah, I'm going to miss the hotel too. Uh, they give me the presidential suite every year, which I got to say, I mean, it, it's not that fancy. It's spacious and it's got a really big terrace that looks right out at the runway of LAX. Do I spend a lot of time like between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m.? just sitting on the terrace watching plane land, planes land, yes. Have I been known to bring one of my remote control planes or helicopters, fly them around the ballroom at 10 o'clock on Thursday night when nobody's in there? You bet, it's awesome. Um, I think I did a panel suggestion workflow uh, from the rock stars to taxi how they manage all facets of the business from creating to admin. Um, can you expand on that and post it in the comments? 
um, after today's show. Five o'clock, got to go in a minute. Uh, taxi team is excellent, super efficient. Yes, they are, and I'm very proud of them. Um, uh, somebody suggested regional virtual meetups yesterday for the virtual road rally to connect us with other passengers who live somewhat close to us. Um, you're certainly welcome to do that, but I mean, it's going to, you know, that kind of, you'd have to be really careful about social distancing, I think. Um, music backups and digital security. Uh, possibly, uh, I took the weekend off from guiding so I can go to the rally. Oh, well, next time. Well, it's still gonna be a rally. It's just not gonna be in Los Angeles. Um, Brazilian master drummer, Edu Ribeiro, do a live workshop on YouTube. Uh, sorry if the top of my head keeps flying off. Well, um, I have a friend who just put out a record of um, like Br Brazilian Afrobeat Portuguese lyrics uh, and it got service to radio, smooth jazz stations, like 10 days ago or two weeks ago, and was the number one most added single. It's smooth jazz. Um, and I may be able to actually get this person on an upcoming episode. Um, his English is not so good. He will answer a lot of times by saying, see. <laughs> anyway, all right, gotta run. Um, see you tomorrow i almost feel like we should continue this i'm getting so much great stuff i don't want to bore you guys to tears with the same topic every day but this is great feedback and i really appreciate it so with that let me wish you all a fond farewell i'm glad you could join me for another exciting episode of taxi's quarantine happy hour and i will see you ladies and gentlemen right back here tomorrow at four o'clock don't forget, if you're not a subscriber already, hit that red subscribe button. Please give us a like. Uh, right there. Give us a like. Um, and put some comments. Uh, remember, the person who has the most great comments under today's video, once the archive is up there, is going to win him or herself a free copy of Composer Catalog. So don't forget to stop by and do that. And I will. I will call John Pearson right now. Thank you, guys. Have a great night. Hello, Christina. Good to see you in there. Bye-bye.